uh, back here at the hall. It's a nice sunny day out there. A little bit on the chilly side, but otherwise pretty nice. So I'm at the rink. Uh, I was in town yesterday. And, uh, oh my God, there's only four pucks, uh, five pucks left. The kids lost them all. That box was like, there was two boxes of pucks and they lost them all. Somebody took my old hockey stick and the goalie stick. Somebody stole the goalie stick. Back to the kids. Uh, anyway, I got two pages worth of stuff. I was away for a day. Today's date is the 3rd? 4th. 4th of January, uh, February. Okay, uh, I want to start off with the first few things that I've... If we went back to January 1st or 2nd, whatever it was when I did that slightly hungover video uh, of my 2017 prediction. So far, <laughs> Trotskyism 2.0 or Neo-Bolshevism, whatever you want to refer to it as, it's well taken place in the States. You can see these uh, UC Berkeley's... Uh, <laughs> which is ironic because the UC Berkeley in the 60s, that's where they were fighting so hard so people could have their say whether they agreed, disagreed, or agreed to disagree. Everybody has their say now people are, shut it down, burn it off. <laughs> ah, you gotta love it. Okay, um, next to that, uh, what else did I got there? Uh, yeah, it does look like they are trying to prep a kind of civil war kind of thing, but I don't think it'll go to a regular civil war like, you know, north and south kind of thing that they can do because the bankers, like the, 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 the people that they use as useful idiots, they're rioters, they're protesters, but they're definitely not revolutionary material. They're not, uh, they can be, some of them, like the Black Bloc protesters could get that violent where they can start killing people and stuff like that. But it'd be only a handful. If we're talking like brigades out in the streets kind of clashing with everybody, uh, no, these are more uh, your typical SJW types. So they're just going to make a lot of noise and destroy a lot of property, but uh, not too many people are going to get killed. But they are turning more violent. That is one thing. They would love the opportunity to... Uh, and you can see the mainstream media trying to justify how it's okay to attack this group or attack that group physically because, well, we know we shouldn't do it, but it's okay. And this is what the media does. It gives that validation that, you know, well, we're really on your side when you do it. And uh, that in itself is what, you know, might get the backlash. Now, the backlash is going to be what we'll call the, you know, the, the true right-wingers or whatever. They'll defend themselves. And so after you see all these leftists, neo-Bolshevik commies to get shot every time they want to hurt somebody. I mean, these guys beat up on women with sticks in, in, in public. I mean, it's just disgusting. And that type of thing. But these kind of guys, they can never take another guy, like a true, you know, they, they can't fight one-on-one. -on -one. They can only fight in these groups of Antifa and stuff like that. But that said, the, you know, the first group of Antifa that really, you know, goes up, say, like against a, a, an army vet or something, they're going to get their asses kicked so bad. And I think a few of them have because, of, you know, like the right-wingers, they typically know how to fight. Right-wingers tend to be more prepper-oriented. Right-wingers tend to be more self-defense-oriented. Uh, those other guys, they're, they're more chaos-oriented. So it's, it's just something to consider. But anyway, uh, so I'm away for two days. I made that other video just, just before we get into all this stuff because i got lots to cover here. Uh, I don't just get into it. Uh, but I made that video uh, understanding the Black Bloc protesters, and when I came home, like I was in town for basically two days, uh, shopping for <laughs> a replay. It's, it's official, my van need, see, needs to see a doctor, and I think it's terminal. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, it, I don't know if it's going to make it till spring. Uh, so I went, you know, looking for, see if I could find some used vehicles or whatever, and see what all the dealerships and all that were. And I come back, and the video that I was using to try to explain to you guys, when you start seeing this stuff, well, before I could even release the video, which was on a scheduled release, UC of Berkeley did exactly what I was describing. And now you can see it, maybe, I don't know, watch, watch that video, just watch, you know, the UC of Berkeley uh, riots, uh, you know, and the police apparently stood down on that one. So again, allowing it to happen. Uh, so it can get out of control. Uh, we've seen this with the Ferguson uh, protester. So when you see, when you, you, you watch that video, now Sargon Armacotta also did an excellent, phenomenal video on describing Black Bloc, the Antifa and the Black Bloc protesters, which is a whole kind of spin-off groups. But at the end of the day, they're all just a bunch of shitbags. They just like to bust stuff. So uh, they're not really revolutionaries. They don't, they're just ideologues that think everything should come about through chaos. It's, it's just, it's, 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 uh, and through vandalism and stuff like that. So maybe there are some of them that have intellectual arguments, but most of them, no, they're going out there to, to, to uh, and then of course you do have agent provocateurs that do try to delegitimize as well. Now, in this case, I don't know, I haven't looked at it enough, but it was just kind of funny that my video comes out, uh, I made the video before this incident, and now th this happens, and of course you're seeing stuff like this all around the world. All right, so anyway, um, fourth generation MiG-35, uh, looks like we're finally unveiling it. And this is in Russia. Basically, it's a hot-rodded MiG-29. Uh, there's 
The MiG-29 OVT, which is your regular MiG-29, with just a little more, a little more, a very maneuverable airplane. Probably the most maneuverable airplane Russia has as a frontline fighter. I know some of their trainers are ridiculously maneuverable too. The pilots can never use the airplane to its full potential because they, they turn themselves into a puddle. So the MiG-29 OVT, which came out a few years ago, is the most modernized of the MiG-29s. Now, the MiG-35 is usually going to be the tandem seat one, uh, which allows a little more uh, sophisticated on uh, air to ground, that type of thing. It, it's more basically when they couldn't get the MiG-42 up and going, which they, they made one, but it was just too expensive. It, the MiG-42 was supposed to be the replacement for the MiG-31, and it just didn't, it just didn't pan out. Uh, so some of the technologies from that, I think, went into the MiG-35, and then, of course, all the new, new stuff. So basically, these are the MiG-35 is really just a highly, highly advanced. Uh, it's like taking a MiG-29 and turning it into an SU-30. Uh, best, best way you could describe it. And the MiG-35 is basically a MiG-29. Uh, just, just uh, Lavrov was uh, talking about the safe zones in Syria. Uh, he likes the idea that uh, Trump was uh, talking about this. But he didn't want to see a no-fly zone, and I don't think Trump has been hinting to a no-fly zone in Syria. I think he's truly hinting at a um, true safe zone for the Syrian people so that they could be there without getting their heads cut off and stuff like that. That said, I, I don't think this is going to be impossible for them to set up, but I don't think the negotiations are anywhere close to done. And uh, what's called uh, the things is, uh, is that... Uh, we're already starting to see cooperation between Russia and the United States. And of course, we're also, since Obama's been out, you've noticed that there's been a lot less uh, Russian aggression, Russian aggression, Russian. They're still there a bit, uh, but it, it's, it's getting pulled from the media. It's not, they're, not, they're not promoting it as much. Uh, main reason, I think, is changing of the guard. So it, that, on that front, it kind of dials things down a bit, which is good. Uh, but it's still, we're, we're still in intense times. And again, you have to understand that, that those central bankers, they really want war. They have to have this war. If they don't, as, as the economy goes, I think Trump is signaling that he's going to hit the reset button. That's going to kill millions of billions of people across the Probably, I would say, two billion people globally will die when he hits that reset button, mainly due to starvation. Because when the United States goes into a, a recession, the world's going to go into a depression. If the United States goes into a depression, <laughs> you know, there is no more. But then again, that could also trigger the one world currency. So this might be a plan all along. We'll have to see. If we end up with a one world currency, we know Trump was in on it all along. Uh, which then, the new world order types. And he is deregulating the banks, which, you know, that, that's... So maybe I think what they're going to do with Trump is say, okay, get Trump to give the people what they want, so we can get what we want, and, and they won't be paying attention to us. And I think that's what a lot of this divide and conquer on the TV is all about, is so you're not paying attention to the banks. These people still need to go to jail. They are criminals. So I'm not saying Trump is fully in with them. Uh, he could be setting them up for disaster, too. Again, we don't know. And again, it's only like three weeks in, so <laughs> we can't expect them to have fixed it in the first five days. You know what I mean? Uh, five days of business or whatever. And the man's been going on stuff. So I think a lot, a lot of people, you know, you know, you've waited this long, you can wait a little bit more. As long as what he's doing is stepping in the right direction, and in a lot of ways he is. Uh, if that's the best we can get, the next guy might be able to take it a little bit further. So, just something to consider. Uh, up here in Canada, Bill C-16, uh, so basically the transgenders are going to be able to use whatever bathroom they want. Uh, that's coming in pretty soon, I think. Dr. Ken Zucker, uh, is the guy that, uh, the reason why I bring this in is, just, is, uh, is uh, the, uh, the, the, the doctor that uh, was saying that the transgenders might be actually linked to autism and stuff like that. Gender dysphoria, gender euphoria, whatever. Just thought I'd, I'd put that in there for people might want to research that. Uh, the magnetic pole reversal. Uh, I don't know if you guys have had the chance to see those, uh, those uh, the, 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 there was like a solar storm the other day. And my dad was just telling me this morning that uh, sometime in April or April 4th or whatever that they're going to be putting the power out for a day here in Quebec and unplug all your electronics. I have no idea what's going on here, but I'll keep an eye on that one too. But anyway, yeah, I saw it the other morning at 5 o'clock in the morning. It was like these little beams of light. Like it was like kind of like snow and really cold, so it was a dry snow and very crystallized, so I could see like little oranges and blues. and It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. But that's an indication of a magnetic pole reversal. Um... It was really saw in North Bay, Rostov, Russia, Norway saw it, uh, places in Norway. Uh, what else I got there? And they call it the uh, uh, 
uh, Pillar Glow. Is, is it Pillar Glow lights is, is, is what they're, they're called. Asteroid B, uh, BH30 uh, 0-17LD uh, is uh, two, 2017. It is supposed to have passed pretty close to us. Uh, but, uh, the third since January 8th of, of big asteroids. There seems to be a lot of larger than normal space rocks just kind of zipping by us. Uh, and it seems like they don't see these things until they're like, oh my god, it just passed us. You know, uh, kind of something to keep, keep in mind. Uh, okay, Iran is uh, basically test two missiles, uh, the uh, uh, Kata F and the K-8. Uh, or, yeah, the K-8, uh, the, these two missiles, and again, uh, some of these missiles have about 2,000 kilometer range. The Iranians are basically saying, we'll, we'll test, uh, you know, he's, telling, he's still telling Trump, we'll test our missiles whenever we feel like testing our missiles. And again, as long as they don't launch them against anybody, there's really nothing you can do. They can, it's a sovereign country, right? Uh, the New Jerusalem Project, this is where uh, something that's going to be very, dis, you know, and, and Trump is already talking about it. Uh, we have Kelly Leach up here that's running for the Conservative Party. She's, she's on board. I think she's just kind of trying to double down and say, well, if it works for him, it'll work for me kind of thing. Uh, moving the, uh, the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, I think is going to create a big rift there. So uh, Iran is supposed to be dropping the U.S. dollar. It's not like they were really using it much anyway because of all the sanctions. So yeah, Iran keeps threatening to do that, but it's not going to have really any big effect. Now, Here's the thing, and other people have probably brought this up too. Iran is bitching about the U.S., uh, this uh, Muslim ban, which is not a Muslim ban. If we look at it, Barack Obama did the exact same thing in 2011, and he kept uh, people from the dangerous areas of, uh, you know, uh, of these countries, these five countries or seven countries, whatever, the, uh, seven countries, whatever they picked. This, these were Barack Obama's picks, and for six months, people couldn't come from those countries into the United States. Nobody said boo. Now you got this whole oh, Muslim ban, Muslim ban ever. Now I think what's going to happen is, and people say, well, why isn't Saudi Arabia on there? Saudi Arabia, I think, is going to be a little bit longer down, but it sounds like Trump is trying to build safe zones in Saudi Arabia and to get them to help out, which I don't know if they will because they are part of the problem. I mean, majorly, them, Israel, are the main, and Turkey are the main ones supporting these rebels, right, which are really ISIS. But that, that, so if, they could, if Trump could pull this off, I don't know what he'll do to bargain, but uh, is, uh, Saudi Arabia again—they don't really have, they can't, they, they can't really do too much. Yes, they could dump the petrol dollar, but they would just get killed if they did that. Uh, you know, like without the U.S. protection, there is no Saudi Arabia. You know what I mean? And Russia, well, you know, they're pushing them pretty hard too. So you're going to do what we want, or we're going to, you know, we, we could have the country destroyed like that. You know, we just we'll just arm the Houthis with better weapons and that type of thing. So. But Iran out there basically complaining that uh, they're dropping the U.S. dollar because of this Muslim ban. Well, it's just, it's for show. It's for show. Why? Because you're telling me they didn't drop the U.S. dollar completely when, uh, you know, all the sanctions, they didn't drop the U.S. dollar when, um, you know, basically uh, the U.S. started backing ISIS. <laughs> you know, like, this is what gets it. You know, like, so I think a lot of it was just posturing and they're, they're just, you know, riding the wave of media intention and stuff like that. That type of thing, so. Uh, again, it's not like the Iran. I don't know how much they use of the U.S. currency, but it's not it's not uh, what you would think. Uh, the uh, Syrians are opening up water lines. Uh, the basically that with the Syrian, I guess the Syrian army or whatever, they're finally starting to restore water to places uh, in Syria that the uh, U.S. backed rebels have been cutting off. ISIS. Okay, uh, keep going here. George Soros, uh, basically, just some of the countries that he, uh, you know, Serbia, Georgia, Ukraine, uh, Egypt, Ukraine again, and a whole bunch of other, uh, there's a Stop Soros uh, 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 project going on right now, and this is basically, uh, and also, you know, Soros will, you know, basically fund the White Helmets, and, and just, you know, all these, uh, the, the, you know, the, the Women's March, and Black Lives Matter, MoveOn.org. This is all George Soros. And George Soros, uh, I don't know how, I think Trump is getting ready to, to, to put the hammer down on this guy. And I hope he does. I, ho I hope he sends in SEAL Team 6, <laughs> you know, or SEAL Team 7, because I think SEAL, SEAL Team 6 is dead. <laughs> but, uh, you know, send in whoever, round this guy up, kill him on the spot, whatever. Do, do what you got to do, because if you don't, uh, he, he's, he's what's keeping the media's 
doing what they're doing. And he's doing it on behalf of someone else. But the thing is, is they're, they're going to have to take him out. Like, I mean, he's just a, a Kyrgyzstan in 05. This guy just destroys economies and countries. Everything like that. And, uh, yeah, so uh, it's uh, Macedonia. They're, they're doing this uh, Stop Soros. Uh, uh, stop Operation. Uh, yeah, Operation. Uh, yeah, Stop Operation Soros. And basically, they're, you know, they're fed up with him just meddling in the country. Never really sure. A lot of people still don't know who George Soros is. And, um, when I was in town, I was having dinner with a friend, and, and she's like, who's that guy you're always talking about? Like, uh, like who, 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 what's his name again? I said, George Soros. He said, the most evil man on, on the planet when you look at what he does. And he funds this, 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 and this. Like, oh, okay, okay. So now she can go and run with it and, and look into it and whatever. And uh, that's what I try to do. And a lot of people are just learning who George Soros is now, you know. Okay, uh, over here in Canada, uh, last year the Liberals brought in 45,000 refugees, okay? Uh, now with this little thing, uh, the uh, shooting that happened in the mosque here, uh, I am going to cover that. There's a few more things I want to hear first before I, I, I make my decision whether it's a 10th Crusade or something else. Because there's a few things that I've been talking about that I said we would be seeing happen in about 8 to 10 years out here in Canada. But if, it's, if this thing looks like it's going to become a trend, then we're going to see it here before we see it in Europe. So in other words, the 10th Crusade might actually start here first. Strangely enough. <laughs> Strangely enough. I'm, I'm still thinking like France and Germany will probably have the first Crusade battles where you've got people dead in the street, you know, Muslims versus, the, you know, the uh, Crusaders 2.0. Uh, and I, I still expect a big, big clash in, in the UK there. And probably around 150,000, 150,000, whatever it's going to be in the streets is Guys, just, and it'll be winner take all at that point. But we could see the start of it here. And there's something I said if you were a minority in two to five years, or three to five years, now more like two to four years in Europe, you better have a plan B to get out of Dodge because what happened here, that's what's going to start happening over there in large numbers. And it won't matter if you're Muslim or not. You're basically going to be targeted because everybody's so riled up. Right? So that's what I'm telling you about. I'm warning you. I'm, I'm giving you the best heads up. You can call me racist bigger if you want. But I, you know, if you listen to what I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is that people are ready to go. And when they do, they'll take it out on whoever's closest. And if you're that person, you and your family are in danger. Can I make it any clearer? I mean, I've been saying this for a while. It's, it seems like it doesn't get through to some people. That's what I'm telling you. So now you can see it. You, you see an example of it. Now, this is, might be an isolated incident, but this could be the beginning of something else. And we could see a new kind of French-Indian wars, you know, probably in the next two years or so in Quebec. That, that's a possibility. Because if the sovereignists get really riled up here, they're, they're going to clash with the natives first. So that's just, but anyway, that's another video for another time. I won't get too far in there because it'll take up too much time. But I want to see a few more things about this guy first before I make the video on that. That's why I'm holding off. Uh, okay, moving on. Yeah, so now the, uh, the refugee thing. Now, if Syria starts to stabilize, these refugees can go back home and rebuild. They can do whatever. Now, some of them are never going to go home because there's free stuff here. Uh, but the thing is, is they're talking now of bringing in 120 to 150,000 refugees uh, between, somewhere between that for 2017, okay? Uh, that's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. No way 15% uh, of the refugees that come in are working. So that was on 45,000. So that's what we're going to be doing here in Canada. And they're talking about lifting the cap of... Uh, so in other words, it's an open country. There, there's no more. Trudeau's like uh, to Trump's Muslim ban, which is not a Muslim ban. It's, you know, radical jihadists. And there was a U.S. soldier, uh, I don't know what his name was, Freaking big, you know, bowling ball for a head, cinder block for a neck, you know, that type of kind of guy. And he's over there in Iraq right now, and he put out a little video. And he goes, something I want you to consider. He goes, I went out and I was talking to some of the locals, right? And he says, what would happen to me if I went into the center of town? They said, you'd be kidnapped within, and dead within the hour. They said, they'd probably cut your head off or whatever. And that, he says, that is the local sentiment of what they want to do to me there, okay? So he says, why would I invite these people into my country? But... This is a guy who knows what's going on in the world. So I can imagine, you know, anybody that's over there now is probably going to be more pro-Trump. You know, because uh, the military typically, you know, they're, they're going to be more pro-Trump. So he, he makes a good point. This is why the travel ban needs to be, you know. And the travel ban is just to vet people. And we're talking max like 200 and some odd people that were stuck at airports. So yeah, it's, 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 people have been stuck at airports for snowstorms for days on end. So things happen. Things happen. We get that. But the, the case in point is that uh, yeah, Trump could have went about it a better way. Could have given like, at least a week's heads up. Say, okay, for by Friday, if you're not where you gotta go by Friday, you're not getting here. You know, you're gonna be held up at the airport, whatever, until we vet you. 
And if you have a green card, yes, you're going to be vetted, but it'll take a little bit longer. So it's not like you can't get into the country. This is what the mainstream media is. And again, every time people find out that the mainstream media lied, it's like, no, you can get into the country. It's just they're going to make sure you go through a bit more of a process to do this. And some people can't get into the country because they have no, there's no way to vet them. And then at that point, I guess they just send you back. Uh, that's protecting the country. You know, the liberals don't see it that way, or the, the progressives don't see it that way because they're, they're, they're idiots anyway. They're the useful idiots. Now, moving on, uh, there was also, looks like uh, in the Al Jazeera area, <coughs> it looks like uh, a Chinook helicopter delivered food to ISIS and, uh, and other, like, basically stuff. And there was extract, looks like there was extraction. So I guess what's going on now is the CIA is probably doing a cleanup. And they've been doing this since uh, Trump got in, where they're going into these little areas, pulling their guys out, out of the, these rebel groups. It's funny how they never, the, these ISIS guys never shoot out these helicopters or anything like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I think it's getting kind of, so it looks like there's extraction. So this, this is the intelligence agents getting pulled out of the, the groups. Because if they get caught with these groups, right? But I, hopefully... Uh, they'll get caught and again anybody for the soldiers that are helping ISIS okay you're a traitor to your own country you're arming the people you got to fight in the future but you're also you've destroyed somebody else's country on a line you know like I, I don't know how I can be you know I understand yes you need loyal soldiers and stuff like that but at some point you know you got to realize right from wrong that's just you know there's no reason to be giving these guys food or anything or intel or anything to over for regime change like it, that is yeah uh, anyway uh, New World Order Breakbind says they're trying, looking ways to assassinate Assad because if they can't do it through a regime change, uh, they, they try another, try another way. But anyway, I don't know. I don't know if they'll be able to get him out of there. And I don't even think it would matter because the, it's not about the Assad. Like Assad said, the people aren't fighting for him. They're fighting, but they want to put a puppet in there to 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 go along with their agenda. But the thing is, is I don't think the military, I think the military knows enough what's going on that even if the U.S. did get their puppet in there or Israel got their puppet in there, you know, Israel, U.S., same thing, uh, government speaking, uh, as well as Saudi Arabia and Turkey, they're, they're, all, they're all in it together and a bunch of other nations. So if they were to get their guy in charge, it wouldn't matter because I think the military would just kill them, kill them right away. And that, that, like, Why? Because the people are fighting for their country. They're fighting for Syria. They're not fighting for the U.S. bankers. You know what I mean? That, that's a big thing. So it, 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 the same thing that happened in Egypt would happen uh, in uh, in Syria. As soon as people found out that this was just another puppet, they just they just overthrow them like they did in Morsi in Egypt. So it looks like uh, M182s, uh, Abrams tanks are going to Latvia, bo Latvia's border uh, right there because uh, a lot of tensions going up in Latvia covered in the last update too. Uh, the NDAA 2017 update. Uh, on nuke attacks against Russia and China. Basically what they, they're looking at is, there's war game now if Russia and China could actually survive a preemptive first strike. So meaning if the United States did a first strike, basically an unprovoked first strike against Russia, they're wondering if they would have time to retaliate, if the, their personnel would survive. So that should be disturbing enough. And uh, this started... Uh, Mike Turner is, is one of the guys working on it, and he, they're asking the questions, would Russia or China survive a, a, a nuclear first strike? So these are the neocon types, like, why would, why would you even worry about a first strike? You know, if they're not doing anything wrong, you have no reason to, these preemptive strike things are just to get you into war. It's not, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I don't believe in free, you know, yeah, but we know the danger is imminent, do you? Let that, mind you, if they strike first, then, you know, Hammer them down. Uh, you also had uh, Trump's guy, the first foreign visit was basically to South Korea and talking about that. If Kim Jong un uh, does anything nuclear, the, 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 over, be, the overwhelming response would just completely, in other words, they would just crush North Korea. Nothing China could do about it, unless China wanted to die for the North Koreans. That's about it. So they would just do that. Uh, so th that's what's stated there. So, you know, North Korea, I don't think the line's going to change on that. And really, it doesn't need to change on that. Just as long as you don't provoke them into firing first, which is what the Obama administration has been trying to get Russia or China or even North Korea to shoot first. And you can't seem to do it. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard, she went to Syria. She talked to Syrian civilians. And they're like, there are no, they're, they're all, they all told her the same thing. No matter what area she went to, there are no 
moderate rebels. Now, Tulsi Gabbard is an interesting, because she's kind of the anti-Trumper working with Trump, uh, and a true anti-Trumper working with Trump. She doesn't agree with Trump on his policies. And I think that's probably why Trump probably would have picked her, just to show that, okay, well, this will show people on her side that Trump is not actually against, you know, whatever, and it keeps things objective. So she goes there and it's like, no, like these, these moderate rebels, they're not moderate rebels, they're not even Syrian, most of them. And this is what Omar Gaddafi talked about, the, you know, the, 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 the you know, tribes of jihadis just flooding into Europe, you take me out, they'll be flooding into Europe and they'll be flooding into Syria and, you know, the, the Middle East will burn. That's what, and he was right, you know, Omar Gaddafi was right. And I do believe the world elites, the future of the world elites is what happened to Omar Gaddafi. That's, at some point, people are going to start taking these people out. Now, I think what Trump is doing is setting it up so when it all collapses, there's going to be a cleansing. You know, like there's being, okay, well, there's no rule of law at this moment. Oh, look at all these people that just got murdered. You know, you know that, that's when they're going to send out the hit squads. That's my hunch. Uh, if, he's, if he's on our side. If he's not on our side, then these douchebags will make twice as much money and whatever. So we'll have to see. We talked about uh, Rand dumping a dollar. Uh, yeah, Trump to uh, take away uh, uh, UC Berkeley funding. Uh, I think it's going to go with uh, if there was a police standout and stuff like that. Basically, in, in the uh, what do you call it, the the the, uh, the dean there, I think was kind of promoting this as a great thing, and then all of a sudden gets out of control and telling the police to stand down. Eventually, they had to go in, uh, but that thing they should never let it get out of that control in the first place. And if that's the case, I hope I hope, I hope the funding is pulled for them. Now that hurts a lot of innocent people that had nothing to do with nothing. But I think it, it does two things because I'm starting to see a lot of these progressives, so to speak, say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa we were just here pro protesting. Yeah, we we're screaming and yelling, but we weren't breaking anything." That's not protesting. Even Whoopi Goldberg, which I, politically I don't really align with Whoopi Goldberg at all. Uh, I don't dislike the lady, but it's just like, you know, she comes off as uh, your typical progressive, uh, smug, and, and, and comes off as the, you know, like uh, if you don't listen to us, well, you're just down here, rather than, okay, well, there's, maybe there's a reason why people have a difference of opinion than you, and that type of thing. But even she's like, what the hell are you doing? You know, if you're out there protesting, fine, scream, yell, do, do what you want. I, I always say the same thing, yeah, sure. You know, disagree, agree, disagree, whatever. And it's kind of refreshing to hear somebody like that say that, because they're usually supposed to go just bash your crazy to the left, right? And she just makes sense, because as soon as you start busting stuff, and rioting, and breaking people's shops, like, why would you be smashing windows of the, the, the small shop owner. Like, what does that have to do with your cause? Nothing. And it delegitimizes your cause. Now, this is also a part of a subversion program. So, you know, there can never be any legitimate protest. So that's why we have to look, is there agent provocateurs in there? That type of thing. So it can never be a legitimate protest because the problem with legitimate protest is it eventually opens dialogue. And the idea is to not have dialogue I don't think Trump is doing this. I, 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 don't, I would say it would probably be more of a George Soros type of thing. And here, here's the reasoning I have here. You take your protesters, okay? You get your agent provocateur, you pay them, say, make sure you do as much chaos as possible, as much vandalism as possible, bust everything. We'll pay you well. And when they do that, the people that would, the Trump supporters are here, the anti-Trump supporters are here. Now, if it's just peaceful protest, at first they'll be just screaming and yelling, but there might actually be discussions between people. But if there's rioting, there's no discussions. It's just rioting. You see what I mean? Because what keeps happening more often than not, and again, I watch this, all the people that are opposing Trump now, and I'm just, I watch people now. I even, I even like, I'm like a, you know, I would, if I ever die, you know, I, I want to be reincarnated every two weeks as a fly, because you fly when you listen, lives for about two weeks. But a really smart fly, because I'm just going to be the fly on the wall listening to people talk. Uh, I was sitting in the Rito Center having a, my meal yesterday, and I'm listening to these two people talking and they're they're anti-Trump or whatever and I can tell them. I mean, you know, I don't engage or nothing like that because I know it's not about Trump. And it's, 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 if, if you're anti-Trump, you're looking here. If you're not, if you're pro-Trump, you're probably looking out over here, seeing what's really going on, right? How am I doing for time here? And uh, that said, but I'm also, I'm starting to see people sway, like they flip. And I call it the meme wars where one, one of my, uh, one of my Facebook friends, like he's, he's I, I guess he's, he's hardcore lefty, right? So everything's anti-Trump for the sake of anti-Trump. Trump could cure cancer and he'd still be anti-Trump. You know what I mean? There's those people, you can't reach them, whatever. And then the pro-Trumpers, most of them are actually kind of silent because they just don't want that aggro and headache. And we see that the abuse that's going to the, the Trump side. Um, people are getting beat up, uh, people are getting killed, kidnapped, all that stuff. 
uh, and it, it's, it's, it's getting to, you know, coming to, so a lot of people just, if they're pro-Trump, they're, they're, you know, speaking in whispers. So it's sad that you can't just openly state your opinion, whatever or we to disagree. But I'm starting to see that more and more people are catching on. The memes are starting to change from anti-Trump, anti-Trump to, uh, for example, uh, my favorite one so far is uh, the inauguration speech uh, numbers, where it's like 2009 Barack Obama, 2007, uh, 16, 17, um, Donald Trump. And then the guy puts on Iron Maiden every night or Metallica 91, whatever, like the crowds are 10 times the size of either of them. You know, that type of thing. It's like, yeah, Iron Maiden every night. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. So people are starting to say, okay, well, the bullshit of it. Now, the thing where Trump, the problem with Trump is he tends to be a little bit overreactionary to the stupid stuff. You should just let it go. Okay, you want to say that about the, the numbers? Okay, fine. Oh, I saw who was there. Let's move on. You know, there's more, bigger fish to fry. And that's, that, but I think that's just Trump's, you know, he's easy to trigger that way. That, that's, his own, that's his own personality. It is what it is. Uh, you know, it's his competitiveness. You'll just have to take that. But you see how, like, things are just completely pointless, arguing over things that are pointless. You know, there was this many more people than that many more. Nobody cares about that. Uh, and people are starting to see that. But, like, for example, Occupy Democrats, like, just stapled to everywhere you go, particularly on Facebook and stuff like that. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a counter to it, but the people are countering it because... I'm starting to see more and more people that would normally be against Trump starting to have a rational conversation. Well, I don't like the way he's doing this. I agree with what he's doing, but he's going about it the wrong way. Uh, or something like that, where I know that person only a couple of months ago would be completely against it. Saying, okay, well, because they've looked into it, and now they're getting the idea. Oh, wait a minute. The media keeps lying. And lying, and lying, and lying, and lying. And it only works, and again, they're using the Saul Alinsky tactic of ridicule, that there's no defense against it. And they believe this. No, a thousand years of lies can be destroyed by moments of the truth. The second somebody figures out that the mainstream media is lying to them and creating all this confrontation and divide and conquer, they, they, that's it. They've lost that person. They will not be able to subvert that person again. And that's what, and that's why they're doubling down to us. CNN, and, and I think it's finished. It's just, when does the funding dry up? <laughs> you know, like that type of thing. So that's what I'm saying. So again, that's why I don't engage too much with people that are anti-Trump. Uh, I just put out little seeds of, you know, keep in mind what divide and conquers. I'm trying to teach people divide and conquer. Like, I've covered all these th videos years ago, but now it's so relevant now. Uh, I'll be talking about the penguin effect next and stuff like that. So all these things, they're going to be coming out now when people need to see that so that they, uh, they learn how to think for themselves rather than just get, wow, Trump did this because the TV told me how much to hate him. You know what I mean? And then look at the whole thing. And again, like, for example, uh, when, oh, the anti-Muslim ban, and then somebody put out, uh, some lady, I don't know who she is, but somehow she's on my Facebook feed, I guess a friend of a friend or whatever, puts out uh, Obama's uh, 2011 thing with the, uh, you know, ban everybody's for six months. Also, all these people are like, anti-Trump, he's hurting the, 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 Obama did it? Well, um, well, I don't like the way he's talking about it. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So they backed off the position one, and they're going to keep going back. So within probably uh, two years, you're going to see Probably 70% of the people that are anti-Trump now are going to be pro-Trump. You know, unless they can really hurt from Trump, or Trump is actually, no, the guy we think he is. So far, I would say he's moving in the right direction. We're not going to have a win on everything, but anyway. Uh, Arctic buildup is uh, basically larger since the Cold War. So the Russians, again, they're doing drills up in the Arctic. Uh, when are they not doing drills? I mean, everybody's doing drills everywhere, so it, it's just... Uh, I'll read this one. Okay, yeah. Uh, so that that one's keep going. The Queen. Uh, I don't think if you, I don't know if you guys saw this or not. The Queen talking about how she can stab Donald Trump with a sword if he goes to the goes to the UK. She can stab him with a sword. There's nothing anybody can do about it. Now, does that not sound like a monarch? For you know, I could just kill you because I feel like it. You know, uh, very shameful of the Queen Mum. She no. You expect more from a lady. Just saying. Just saying. Now, I have my issues with the royal family for sure, but you know they are the world order, but just saying, you know, you're that kind of a figurehead of states, you should be calling for calm, you should be calling for peace. Now, I want to take this guy out with my broadsword, you know? Yeah. You know, it's like, let's make this good, grab me the Claymore! Yeah. <laughs> Claymore bastard. Queen Mom, would you like to claim more of the bastard sword, or would you like the, uh, oh, 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 we've got a hand and a half here for you, or possibly, uh, oh, oh, here's a nice little, yeah, we can use a, an epee, and you could just do a pair, of nice and light, it won't hurt your wrist. You know, like, I, yeah. Or perhaps a saber. <laughs> no, I can see the big moment. I want to make two-hander! Norman sword all the way! Uh, give me my big English sword! <laughs> and those things are like six feet long. Those uh, English swords are like 54 inches or something like that. The, the, the great English swords. Yeah. 
yeah, she's probably taking a Scottish claim more than, yeah, yeah, I can see that. If she can lift it, I mean, I don't know. But anyway, uh, mass artillery barrage in uh, the Nesk area. Uh, the there's a, the Donbass offensive. Uh, remember that Ukraine was bringing in uh, about two or three weeks ago. Again, don't be afraid to go over some of my older World War III updates because there's always relevant in information. But remember uh, all those tanks and artillery and everything moving up to the line? Well, I guess what Ukraine is doing is like, Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump, fire the artillery. Boom, 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 boom. We're over here, see? <laughs> so it's like, you know, artillery barrage of the Donetsk area to get uh, Trump's attention. Um, I don't know, uh, Trump, I don't really know what his stance on Ukraine is yet. Uh, it doesn't look like he's going to engage with it. I think this is going to be part of the uh, negotiations with Putin. Putin and Trump have talked, and relations do seem, I mean, they're, they're, we're still in the two, Cold War 2.0, just because the mainstream, the mainstream media lies to you all the time anyway. So why do you think they tell you the truth about this? No, if you've been following this channel, you know we're in much worse than the first Cold War. We've never seen this escalation in the first Cold War. No, first Cold War was scary, but there were much smarter men there. This is like we're on brink levels all over the place. Or things that could potentially live, uh, lead us up to bricks. Uh, the mass militarization and drills are, 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 you know, it's the largest military drill and uh, naval drill in history, or the largest tank drill in history, or, or whatever it be. And then three months later, the largest. There's only so many people on the planet. At some point, it wasn't going to be seven billion <laughs> people out on, on a drill. Who knows? You know, like, so people are catching up. That so. But that said, I don't know. Like this seems to be. It doesn't seem like they're crossing the line. Uh, again, uh, the DPR does seem to be able to hold them off, but if they're backed by Russia, again, like I've said, Putin can bleed this out for generations if he wanted to, long past well, you know, his predecessors. They could just say, okay, well, just we're, we're, we got that area, we're not giving it back, and I don't think the Russians are going to give it back. East-West East Ukraine, I called that a year, a year in advance, uh, just kind of like I called the Bolshevik 2.0 riots that we're seeing now. <laughs> like, I call this stuff in advance. I'm not always right. I know a lot of people are like, dude, you're wrong, like, all the time. Not all the time. I mean, when I get it right, I get it right. You know what I mean? And it usually, you know, like a month before Lee Reap, got his head cut off. I called that right. Uh, I'm going to have to start listing down all the things that I call right. Uh, and it's not because I have a crystal ball. It's because you, you, you just connect the dots. You know, 2 plus 2 doesn't equal 4. It's, you know, or, or uh, 2 plus 2 doesn't equal 5. It equals 4, right? So, oh my God, the uh, brainwashing is working on me. Uh, YPG gets uh, more um, gear. They're, apparently, they're getting, like, um, light weapons and some APCs and stuff like that. Yeah, so the Donbass Offensive, uh, we talked about that. Uh, Trump is distributing uh, some extra powers to law enforcement to crack down on illegals going across the border. Now, the border wall thing, I, I don't know if it's a metaphorical wall or actually, it does sound like this man wants to get brick and mortar there. I, I, it really does. I don't think... I think uh, that should be, I think what he's probably going to do is, we'll start the wall, we'll build it really slow so we don't spend too much money, but just go after, again, get 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 them to practice self-deportation by no welfare for you, no driver's license, no voting, no health care, no whatever, and, and remove the incentives, and anybody uh, hiring illegals, bang, there you go, $10,000 fine per head. Um, next thing you know, people will just self-deport. I think that would be the best way to go about it, and probably, yes, there'll be a lot of, you know, violent protests and riots, but I think after a while it, it'll just burn itself out and the people will go. That's a thing. Uh, 12 F-16s uh, to uh, South Korea, so we've got another more F-16s going there. Uh, the Looking into the sanctions, uh, Trump is looking into the sanctions on Russia, and again, the, the uh, you know, the mainstream media is out there saying, oh, uh, Trump is just taking away the sanctions. He hasn't done it yet. Uh, but he's looking into it, you know, and I think it's good one thing at a time. We'll do this, you do this. Trump has talked about it. Uh, I think Trump, uh, one of the chess games he's playing is he sets, he says something to set the mainstream media up, and then he, he reneges on it just to make them look bad. And I think that's kind of the, they're, they're too stupid to catch on to it. So that's probably why it looks like Trump flip-flops a lot, but I, I think all he's doing is just sets them up to, uh, to do that. I don't know if you saw the guy that was trying to ask uh, Trump a question, and they had to remove him there. And because, again, one thing that Trump doesn't, if you are a legitimate reporter and you're anti-Trump, don't cut somebody else off. Put your hand up, let Trump come to you, get your question. Say, sir, Mr. Mr. President, I have to hold your feet to the fire on them. You said this, this date, time, da, da, and I, we would really like to know an answer on that. But every time these people, like, try to cut in, he kicks them out. And he kicks some guy out, and it's like, 
you know, it's like, well, I mean, you know, the guy like, get the fuck out of my country, you know, the security guy, he's like, get the fuck out of my country, you know, kind of thing. Um, and rightfully so, because it's like, you know, th this president, he, he, he doesn't respond to that. And again, if you're a smart journalist, you got to kill him with kindness and come at him with a coke and a smile. Or like Richard Pryor would say, have a coke and a smile, shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? And that's what's happening. You know? <laughs> so if you don't have your coke and your smile with you, Trump isn't... And if he thinks you're fake news, and he brands his fake news, that's it. You're going to destroy your brand. You're never going to be able to get it. So you're going to have to get somebody else who he doesn't know to go in there, ask the questions for you. It does worry me that Trump does behavior like this, because, but then again, he kind of has to because of the demonization from the mainstream media. So we know if you're kind of semi... Uh, observant, yeah, how am I doing for time here? Uh, 45? Wait, uh, if you're semi observant, uh, observant, you know that the mainstream media is out to get Trump. You know, you, know, that, you don't even have to be fully observant. You can, you can kind of pick it up, and I think most people are. And that's why they don't, uh, you're seeing less reactionary uh, of people that just, oh, I gotta go anti Trump right away. It's like, oh, I go anti Trump, and then I look like a fool when I find out the mainstream media lied to me, it makes me look bad. So people are now waiting to see, okay, well, I'll give it a couple of days, and then I'll put my opinion on it. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. You know, uh, and that's why we've got to do it right now. And but to be able to question Trump. I mean, I would have questions for Trump too. My first question is, Mr. President, why haven't you went after the central bankers yet? These are the people that created all the problems. Why aren't you uh, banning all uh, George Soros NGO groups? And what I think he's setting up for that. Maybe he doesn't want to tilt his hand or whatever. I, I would also say, how come you're not ending these wars? Like, let Russia and, and Syria take care of Syria. They've got it. We just got to stop arming the people there. Uh, do you know about these things? And I'm sure at this point he must. I'm sure, because anybody right now that's crossing Trump by lying to him, whether they're intelligence agencies or whatever, they're going to... That's a man I don't think you want to cross. You know, even Putin. God help Putin if he crosses Trump. If Putin and Trump make a deal, this is Trump calling Putin's bluff. We've had a weird thing for the last past eight years where all Putin had to do to make the U.S. and Medvedev, because Medvedev was in there for a little bit too, uh, up until 2012, as, as the uh, prime, uh, president of, of, of Russia. Now he's prime minister again. I, or, I don't know if, if Medvedev is prime minister again. I mean, uh, Russia's weird. Uh, some, some countries have a president, some have a prime minister, some have both. And that, that's what Russia has. They have a president and a prime minister. Uh, but anyway, for, for that length of time, all Russia had to do to make the U.S. look bad was tell the truth. But now all Trump has to do to make Russia look bad is make a deal. That's it. You know, like, like it is kind of a win-win situation for the people. Uh, it'll be a win situation for the Russians because it makes the Russians safer. Uh, it'll be bad for the Russian oligarchs and stuff like that because then the militarization will have to de-escalate. There'll be no justification. Well, NATO's not expanding anymore. We don't need to, you know. We, and then people say, well, we want a hospital. We want paved roads. We want this. We want that. And then they're going to have to do that. And, and that'd be good for the people. Uh, the other thing is, is if Trump makes a deal and Trump would be like, "This is what was signed. This is what you're going to do. You don't do this. We're going to do. We're going to, you know, we're going to hammer you over the head." I, like I say, Putin is kind of like the James Bond supervillain, uh, tactician, you know, uh, uh, playing chess. Where Trump is just a, a bull in a china shop. Just, you know, you have to stroke his ego. Or he's going to trash the place. You know, what I mean, that's just the way Trump does business. It's, you know, you know, we, we're going to. Here, here's how Trump negotiates. Right? Here's how Putin negotiates. We will make deal. Here's, here's what we'll do. We'll make deal. You'll be happy. We'll be happy. Everybody be happy and safe. We'll no launch nukes. Everybody be good. Everybody calm, collected. Here, you just sign. I we sign. I sign. You sign. We're not good friends. Very good friends. Trump, here's the deal. Sign it. <laughs> Sharpening the horn, stomping the hoof, stroke my ego. Sign it. Make that deal. But you sign that. You, you're gonna. You know. Believe me. Believe me. It's the best deal. The other deals. There's disaster. This deal. This, this is a good deal. This, this deal is really good. Believe me. Believe me. You sign it, okay. Honor the deal. <laughs> you know that's it. You know, or I'm gonna trash you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, you get the idea. So, yeah, that's kind of the world we live in. Uh, yeah, because we're now starting to see less of the Russian aggression propaganda out there. But it doesn't mean that things can't. Because uh, I mean, obviously, the New World Order types in the background are still trying. John McCain and Lindsey Graham, those goofbags. I think I got. Yeah, here we go. McCain and Graham uh, visit to Ukraine. Uh, you know, of course, they're talking about that's how new Russia. These guys are such douchebags. John McCain himself was actually a war criminal. Uh, this guy, pictures with al Baghdadi, you know, my moderate rebel friends, uh, leader of ISIS, leader of al Nusra. He's with all these guys. This man is a terrorist. He armed terrorists. Yeah, he needs to go to jail. That's uh, that's where the question I have for Trump. Start draining the swamp. Why don't I see chrome bracelets everywhere? You know, why 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 are you not running out of handcuffs right now? 
You know what I mean? There's enough, more than enough people that are openly admitted criminals. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so Lindsey Graham and McCain, I, and I think they're just, it's, Lindsey Graham, is, is, he's an asshole to begin with. Uh, the fraud, him and Zig, those three, uh, Zygmunt Brzezinski, Lindsey Graham, Henry, uh, and, and John McCain, they fraud that the mouth every time they talk about nuking Russia. Like, they get this glazed eye, and they look like, yeah, yeah, let's do Russia, let's do it, yeah, yeah, hit the button, let me hit the button, make me president so I can hit the button, you know. Uh, Trump stands on uh, when he was asked about having the, uh, the uh, power, uh, of, of launching nukes, and he says, it's terrifying. That's what I want to hear from the president. That fits. He goes, if it comes to it, I'll do what I have to do, but it's a terrifying responsibility. Very logical, very, you know. Again, people, I think they under, even myself, I underestimate Trump. He comes off as if he's like some uh, schoolyard bully, but he's a tactician. I mean, this man, when you look at it, after something happens, it's like, oh, okay, I see what he was doing now. I was like, oh, geez, hey, that was quite smart. Nobody saw it coming. Again, Putin, I, uh, I think a, uh, a, a poker game between Putin and Trump would be, oh yeah, you'd hear Kenny Rogers playing in the background, you know, the gambler or whatever, you know. I don't know who would be better. I really don't know. Because I think one would have the cold face like Putin. You wouldn't know what he has because he's emotionless. Well, I don't think he can be emo have emotions. He's got so much Botox in his face. He can't, he's probably smiling all the time, but you can't tell because his face is like cement, you know, um, which would make him a good poker player. But Trump, he'd be leading, oh, 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 yeah, he's got like nothing, you know, like, you, know you, you guys ready to call? You ready to call? Let's call, let's call. No. All in, all in, yeah, yeah, let's call. Yeah, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And uh, there we go, okay, I'm okay. I got nothing. <laughs> I think that's how Trump is. You know, it, it seems like, because that's how he seems to be playing the game, you know. Um, the uh, sanctions on Iran, uh, they're, they're because of Iran, Iran is doing some weird stuff again. They're, they're, saber, they're starting to saber rattle a bit. I think they're just trying to feel out the Trump administration to see where they stand. Because it's like, they could just let sleeping dogs lie here. But, uh, you know, on, on a lot of things. Because Trump, he, my biggest fears for Trump is the world elites duping him into, especially Israel, uh, duping him into a war with Iran. Uh, my other big, but the biggest fear is, is with China. So his stance on China and his stance on Iran are the big two concerns I have. But I still, again, maybe we're, he's playing that, you know, kind of playing that, oh, Iran, you're going to get it, you're going to get it. Okay, we're going to work out a deal. You know, they just, I'll just posture for now so they don't know which way I'm coming at them. At. Keep them nervous when they don't need to be, you know what I mean, that type of thing. And maybe pressure them to do something voluntarily rather than have to negotiate. It could be what he's doing. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to overestimate. Uh, Trump's intelligence, but I'm also, so far, this man has made mockeries of a lot of people so far who say he couldn't do this, he couldn't do that, he can't do this, he can't do that. Look what he's done so far. And I think we're going into the third week of his presidency. <laughs> we got like 12 years worth of stuff in three weeks. Like, can you keep up to it? I can't. I can't. And I follow this stuff for a living. Uh... Okay, William Ryan, uh... It was an anti-terrorism operation that went wrong and a bunch of civilians got killed and a guy named William Ryan. But we don't know if it was because of bad intelligence that Obama said, yeah, this is what's going on here, here's the intelligence, way you go. And it looked like it didn't work out and it's on Trump's watch. So we'll have to see what's going on there. But uh, the, uh, and uh, William, William Ryan, so I, I don't know all that. So like, it looked like it was a failed mission in, uh, in the Middle East there. But. Okay, uh, oh yeah, so. Last year, uh, 50 billion euros was spent on the migrant cri crisis, uh, and we have Operation Sophia coming up. And basically, it looks like the European Union now. I don't know if you've seen uh, uh, a couple of these EU cats out there talking about, oh, well, oh, the populism thing. Don't worry about it. It's, it's no, no. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to stop uh, we're going to stop uh, you know with Operation Sophia. We're going to stop these migrants coming in there because we, we can't handle them right now. So they're, they're, Trying to do anything to save face. It's too late. The, 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 the canary already, uh, you know, the cat already ate the canary here. Uh, there are a lot of people that are, I heard that uh, the official numbers are in. Marine Le Pen looks like she's going to win the first round of votes. I don't know. The French have a different way of voting. They have a first round and a second round, but everybody's saying she won't make the second round. Um, I don't know about that. It's hard to say because uh, a lot of the people in the European Union are saying, well, we're not going to go too, too much with the polls because. We saw how it, 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 like, again, there's people that still have no clue why Donald Trump won the election. And it's, he, he won because, not because of racist bigot and white lash and all that. No, he won because people want him to drain the swamp. 
You know, that's why all these polls were meaningless. You know, they were just, you know, sampling the people that already agreed with them. So that type of thing. So the, the thing is, is the European Union, like, well, we don't want to get into that same, you know, false sense, oh, yeah, we got this in bag when we don't. So for Marine Le Pen, if she takes France, that would be a step in a good direction. If she doesn't, there is no more France. It will become a Muslim country. And the EU will just be whatever it's going to be. Uh, how are they going to stay in there? And you will have definitely war in, in, in France. Uh, civil war against the migrants because it, yeah. again, there's many many of my friends have no like they're like why why are we helping all these nice refugees these poor refugees they're just trying to flee their home and, and there are probably a lot of them that are peaceful there's no doubt about that but on the other hand the fact that they don't have no clue every time I find the you know rape crisis stuff or I try to post it and this one thing that Donald Trump's doing with the um, and of course they call it racist right away and of course racist when they yell racist it's usually because they want to shut up the argument because they really don't want people to know a, either the truth or break their narrative you know it's either a dogmatic religious progressive uh, you know ideology that they have it is very religious very dogmatic and then there's that part of the brainwashing but the other part is, is oh if people actually see what the numbers are uh, they might be supporting Donald Trump. So what Donald Trump's going to be doing, for example, is with all these illegals that are committing crimes and murdering people and raping people and doing stuff like that, he's going to start releasing that. Now some people say, well, he should release the, the white people crime statistics too. Well, that, that they used to do that. That's, the, what, that's what I think he's going to do. He says, look, uh, here, we're going to show you who's doing the crime. Obviously, just restore the crime statistics to what they were before Obama. And they've done this in Sweden too, where they don't say the identity of the perpetrator. Which they should, because that, that's how you find out the Oprah representation. But they say, no, it's just racist to do that. But it's not racist. People are dying. People are getting... So when people say, okay, well, almost every second murder is from, uh, or rape is from a migrant, or it's from a, you know, and you see how much crime they have. Okay, well, that means his policies actually make sense. That, and trust me, the mainstream media doesn't want that, because it'll make them look bad again. And at this point, there's nothing they can do to reverse... Uh, the mainstream media can do to reverse because if they start agreeing with Trump, uh, Bernie Sanders is even starting to agree with Trump a little bit. Again, Bernie Sanders, I think this guy's like a fish. He'll flip-flop on anything. Um, I'm not a Sanders supporter at all. I, I, you know, well, I'm Canadian, so it wouldn't matter if I supported him or not. But um, no, was, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't trust Sanders right from the get-go. And, you know, like this guy, he lost the election to Hillary Clinton, then endorsed her, now he's starting. Good day and welcome. Alrighty, a World War Three update. I'm uh, back here at the hall. It's a nice sunny day out there. A little bit on the chilly side, but otherwise pretty nice. So I'm at the rink. Uh, I was in town yesterday. And uh, oh my God, there's only four pucks, or five pucks left. The kids lost them all. That box was like there was two boxes of pucks and they lost them all. Somebody took my old hockey stick and the goalie stick. Somebody stole the goalie stick. Back to the kids. Uh, anyway, I got two pages worth of stuff. I was away for a day. Today's date is the third, fourth, <laughs> fourth of Janu uh, February. Okay, uh, I want to start off with the first few things that I've. If we went back to January first or second, whatever it was, when I did that slightly hungover video uh, of my 2017 prediction. So far, <laughs> Trotskyism 2.0 or neo Bolshevism, whatever you want to refer to it as, is well taken place in the states. You can see these. Uh, UC Berkeley's, uh, <laughs> which is ironic because the UC Berkeley in the 60s, that's where they were fighting so hard so people could have their say whether they agreed, disagreed, or agreed to disagree. Everybody had their say, and now people are, shut it down, burn it off. <laughs> ah, you gotta love it. Okay, um, next to that, uh, what else did I got there? Uh, yeah, it does look like they are trying to prep a kind of civil war kind of thing, but I don't think it'll go to a regular civil war like, you know, North and South kind of thing that they can do because. The bankers, like the, 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 the people that they use as useful idiots. They're rioters, they're protesters, but they're definitely not revolutionary material. They're not, uh, they can be some of them, like the Black Bloc protesters could get that violent where they could start killing people and stuff like that. But it'd be only a handful. If we're talking like brigades out in the streets kind of clashing with everybody, uh, no, these are more uh, your typical SJW types. So they're just going to make a lot of noise and destroy a lot of property, but uh, not too many people are going to get killed. But they are turning more violent. That is one thing. They would love the opportunity to... Uh, and you can see the mainstream media trying to justify how it's okay to attack this group or attack that group physically because, well, we know we shouldn't do it, but it's okay. And this is what the media does. It gives that validation that, you know, well, we're really on your side when you do it. And uh, that in itself is what, you know, might get the backlash. Now, the backlash is going to be what we'll call the, you know, the, the true right-wingers or whatever, they'll defend themselves. And so after you see all these leftist 
neo-Bolshevik commies to get shot every time they want to hurt somebody. I mean, these guys beat up on women with sticks in, in, in public. I mean, it's just disgusting. And that type of thing. But these kind of guys, they can never take another guy, like a true, you know, <laughs> they, they can't fight one-on-one. -on -one. They can only fight in these groups of Antifa and stuff like that. But that said, the, you know, the first group of Antifa that really, you know, goes up, say, like against a, a, an army vet or something, they're going to get their asses kicked so bad. And I think a few of them have because, of, you know, like the right-wingers, they typically know how to fight. Right-wingers tend to be more prepper-oriented. Right-wingers tend to be more self-defense oriented. Uh, those other guys, they're, they're more chaos oriented. So it's, it's just something to consider. But anyway, uh, so I'm away for two days. I made that other video just before we get into all this stuff because I got lots to cover here. Uh, I don't just get into it. Uh, but I made that video uh, understanding the Black Bloc protesters, and when I came home, like, I was in town for basically two days, uh, shopping for <laughs> a replay. It's, it's official, my van need, see, needs to see a doctor, and I think it's terminal. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, it, I don't know if it's going to make it till spring. Uh, so I went, you know, looking for, see if I could find some used vehicles or whatever, and see what all the dealerships and all that were. And I come back, and the video that I was using to try to explain to you guys when you start seeing this stuff, well, before I could even release the video, which was on a scheduled release, you see Berkeley did exactly what I was describing. And now you can see it, maybe, I don't know, watch, watch that video, just watch, you know, the UC of Berkeley uh, riots, uh, you know, and the police apparently stood down on that one. So again, allowing it to happen. Uh, so it can get out of control. Uh, we've seen this with the Ferguson uh, protester. So when you see, when you, you, you watch that video, now Sargon Armacotta also did an excellent, phenomenal video on describing Black Rock, the Antifa and the Black Bloc protesters, which is a whole kind of spin-off groups. But at the end of the day, they're all just a bunch of shitbags. They just like to bust stuff. So uh, they're not really revolutionaries. They don't, they're just ideologues that think everything should come about through chaos. It's, it's just, it's, 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 uh, and through vandalism and stuff like that. So maybe there are some of them that have intellectual arguments, but most of them, no, they're going out there to, to, to uh, and then of course you do have age of provocateurs that do try to delegitimize as well. Now, in this case, I don't know, I haven't looked at it enough, but it was just kind of funny that my video comes out, uh, I made the video before this incident, and now th th this happens, and of course you're seeing stuff like this all around the world. All right, so anyway, um, fourth generation MiG-35, uh, looks like they're uh, finally unveiling it. And this is in Russia. Basically, it's a hot rodded MiG-29. Uh, there's the MiG-29 OVT, which is your regular MiG-29, which is a little more, a little more, a very maneuverable airplane. Probably the most maneuverable airplane Russia has as a frontline fighter. I know some of their trainers are ridiculously maneuverable too. The pilots could never use the airplane to its full potential because they they turn themselves into a puddle. So the MiG-29 OVT, which came out a few years ago. Is the most modernized of the MiG 29s. Now, the MiG 35 is usually going to be the tandem seat one, uh, which allows a little more uh, sophisticated on uh, air to ground, that type of thing. It, it's more basically when they couldn't get the MiG 42 up and going, which they, they made one, but it was just too expensive. It, the MiG 42 was supposed to be the replacement for the MiG 31, and it just didn't, it just didn't pan out. Uh, so some of the technologies from that, I think, went into the MiG-35, and then, of course, all the new, new stuff. So basically, these are the MiG-35 is really just a highly, highly advanced... Uh, it's like taking a MiG-29 and turning it into an SU-30. Uh, best, best way you could describe it. And the MiG-35 is basically a MiG-29. Uh, just, just uh, Lavrov was uh, talking about the safe zones in Syria. Uh, he likes the idea that uh, Trump was uh, talking about this. But he didn't want to see a no-fly zone, and I don't think Trump has been hinting to a no-fly zone in Syria. I think he's truly hinting at a um, true safe zone for the Syrian people so that they could be there without getting their heads cut off and stuff like that. That said, I, I don't think this is going to be impossible for them set up, but I don't think the negotiations are anywhere close to done. And uh, we call it uh, the things is, uh, is that... Uh, we're already starting to see cooperation between Russia and the United States. And of course, we're also, since Obama's been out, you've noticed that there's been a lot less uh, Russian aggression, Russian aggression, Russian. They're still there a bit, uh, but it, it's, it's getting pulled from the media. It's not, they're, not, they're not promoting it as much. Uh, main reason, I think, is changing of the guard. So it, that, on that front, it kind of dials things down a bit, which is good. Uh, but it's still, we're, we're still in intense times. And again, you have to understand that, that those central bankers, they really want war. They have to have this war. If they don't, as, as the economy goes, I think Trump is signaling that he's going to hit the reset button. 
That's going to kill millions of billions of people across it. Probably, I would say, two billion people globally will die when he hits that reset button, mainly due to starvation. Because when the United States goes into a, a recession, the world's going to go into a depression. If the United States goes into a depression, <laughs> you know, there is no more. But then again, that could also trigger the one world currency. So this might be a plan all along. We'll have to see. If we end up with a one world currency, we know Trump was in on it all along. Uh, which then 